main speaker. There's a couple fun facts about him. He uh, met his wife, Kathy, at Kent State. She played basketball there, and he met her in the weight room. So, fellas, you never know where you'll find the one. Uh, they, have three, they have three daughters together. The oldest one is coming here next year. The youngest is in eighth grade, and the middle one is committed to play volleyball at Michigan. So, that, oh. so try not to throw things. Um, fun fact about his playing career in high school, his summer team wore shorts, which is something I've never seen before. And uh, his me most memorable moment was getting picked off at first base in Tiger Stadium. So that's not something that everybody- old Tiger Stadium. <laughs> that's not something everybody can say. So let's hear it for uh, head coach of the reigning Big Ten Tournament Champions, Coach Fields. leave that down there. I don't think I, uh, I've been blessed with Coach's voice, so uh, hopefully I project well enough. Um, first thing I want to say is what an honor it is to be here in front of you uh, and how much respect I have for each of you as, as student athletes, but also as Christians and, and the challenges that, that you have and, and the things that you're going through in life. And I'm the head baseball coach at Ohio State. That's what I am. I want to talk about who I am which is more important. Um, I'm a son of God, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a brother, um, I'm an emotional guy at times, <laughs> so bear with me on that. Um, so this is something that's important to me to, to share my story and continue my process. Um, my goal is to share my story, share some of the things that, that I've learned and hopefully it helps you through your process. Like I said, I have tons of respect for, for Athletes in Action as an organization, the things that, that they do. I'm starting to question that a little bit when you give Caleb Huth the microphone at one of your events. That's uh, not always the best thing to do, but uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, I want to thank Tom, uh, Chris and Carl uh, for what they mean to me in my growth. Um, my growth has been extensive in the last seven years since I've been at Ohio State. Um, and part of that is I've always been a believer, but I've been trying to figure out how to make the next step. And these guys have uh, helped me with that uh, very, very much. So I appreciate them and what they do. I get to speak a lot as a head coach at Ohio State. When I was a head coach at Ball State, didn't get to speak as much as when you're the head coach at Ohio State. Uh, and I've been in front of thousands of people, spoke at our national convention three years ago in front of 5,000 people, talking baseball, man, that's easy. I can get on the stage and roll. I don't get emotional, don't do that. I just do what you do. Um, but this is at the heart. Um, so, and, and uh, it, I've uh, had more anxiety probably about speaking here tonight um, than, uh, than speaking at our national convention in front of 5,000 people. So kudos to you that you mean that much to, to all of us. Um, and I've got all these notes partially because we're in season and my mind's in many different places. Um, we've got to get ready to beat Purdue on Friday night. Um, but uh, being here in front of you is very important. So let me get rolling on, on some stuff. And I want to share a story. Yesterday, Tom was in my office and, and helped me collect my thoughts and get things organized. and and sharing some verses that, that I can share with you and that those are on a um, sheet of paper there that, that we'll refer to as I get going. Um, but one thing I thought was really cool uh, when he was praying for me um, is that he said, for the lessons I'm learning. Uh, and the lessons I've learned, but the lessons that I'm learning, meaning that it's a process. And I stand in front of you uh, as a work in process. You know, this is not done. I'm not perfect. It's not, it's always going to be, uh, you know, a work in process. And that's what that, that Philippians 3.12, that's uh, really a, a great point there. And the thing that I like uh, when I look at that is to press on, is, is the words in that verse that, that really mean, that, that catch me, is to press on. And... We talk about our pursuit. We talk about seeking. Those words are action words. They're action words. They require us to take action. 
and in our pursuit and our faith to, to stay strong and to keep growing and getting better, we have to take action. And the words that, that, that we hear and, and that you read all throughout are absolutely pushing us to, to take action and, and to stay, stay the course. Not going to be easy. It's going to be a challenge, and it's, but it's a work in progress. So you got to think the word work, the word press on, seek, whatever it is, that they're, they're action words. Um, as a young man growing up in the church, I was made to believe that I had to earn my salvation, uh, that, that I had to go out and earn it. And I have learned and am learning that I've been granted that. And, and I didn't really do anything to get that. That's somebody way more powerful, somebody perfect. The only thing that is perfect did that for me. And now I have a responsibility um, to carry on and, and to share that uh, and, and to just act. You know? And so this being grand, that's the, that's the thing that tells you to keep pushing on. To, to press on, uh, which leads me to my next topic I like to talk about. Um, you know, I, I, I first started thinking that my faith was something that was personal, that it was just mine, um, and it is personal, but we shouldn't keep it private. The things that we care about, we need to be ambassadors to. You care about your sport, you care about your family, you care about the Ohio State University, you care about Jesus Christ, and we need to be ambassadors to all those things that matter to us. There are a lot of things in this world that aren't good, that aren't good, but you guys have a real good understanding of the things that are good and the, the things that you have, the gifts that you've been given. Be ambassadors of those things. Wear them on your sleeve. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid to stand up here and be a little bit emotional because it matters to me. And I'm going to be an ambassador to that, those things that matter to me. Uh, and the, the second uh, verse that's on, on that sheet of paper there from 2 Corinthians, you know, it tells us that. Be an ambassador. Yeah, I don't have to read it. You can read it all. But it, it, it's, it's words that, that are there and have been provided for us. And it's, it's very, very, very telling. Something that... that absolutely is critical. <clears throat> the first verse says, press on and make it your own. Yes, take ownership in it. It is personal. Take ownership in your faith, but don't keep it private. Be an ambassador. Spread, the, spread that good word. Um, let me give you a little bit about my background and growing up and Coming, coming to Christ, um, I grew up in the church, meaning that my mother got us out of bed on Sunday and loaded us in the car and took us to church. And as Coach D said, we, I, God had a relationship with me before I was smart enough to have a relationship with him. Um, it was there. I was a believer uh, because that's what I was told to be. Uh, I've grown and taken ownership in that, though. Um, so I went to church. Um, my father didn't go to church with us. Um, my father was a CFO of the hospital in town, worked his butt off, type A personality, control freak, um, to the 10th degree. Uh, and Sunday was kind of his day to rest. I didn't think much of it growing up. You know, it's what we did. We're, as kids, we're resilient. Mom gets us up, we go, we do what we do. Dad stays home, dad needs it. Dad works his butt off, he needs it. Um, which was interesting, because I lost my father when I was a junior in high school. He lost the battle to cancer. Um, high stress. The amount of stress we have in our lives can deplete our immune system. That's what I learned during this process. My dad was, everything was inside, stuck. And that didn't allow his system to fight things off. Um, so he was 41 years old, I was a junior in high school, 
and I lost my father. And during that time, um, it, it was a time where I actually started coming to God. You know, there were some questions. Why my dad? Why? Why do I lose my father? Now, you know, um, but I guess I didn't really look at it that way. I, what took me to God is the, the, the fear that I had that I didn't know where my father was. And I still don't. I don't know where my father is. I don't know if he reconciled. I don't know that. Because we didn't share. He didn't share that with us growing up. I pray to God that he was just private with it. Um, because he didn't share it. And it's something that when I, when I pray, I pray, one thing I pray for every time is I pray for my father. That we will enjoy life together again. There's a cool um, m part of a movie. You've all seen the movie The Gladiator? It's one of my favorite movies. Russell Crowe finally dies at the end where he's going to be with his family. But his, one of his fellow gladiators had his, uh, his little um, figurines and he buried those figurines. And he said, I'll see you on the other side. And he smiled and he said, but not yet, my friend, but not yet. Because he still had life to live. He still had things to do that he wanted to do. And the thing that I look, when I see that movie and I see the smile on his face, it's a smile of faith. That he knows where his friend's going and he knows where he's going. But it's not his time. He's, he, hadn't, he hadn't been called yet. But not yet, my friend. Pretty cool. Um, powerful to me when I, when I think about that, that movie and I think about my father uh, during that time. One thing that's important to me as a father is that I'm sharing um, with my kids that they know what's important to their father and they know where where it's at and when I get called they know where I'm going to be um, so as, as I said I was a junior in, in high school at that point uh, a couple years later I'm off to college and as you know there's a lot of things that go on in college a lot of opportunities to do different things and go different directions. And I wouldn't say I was lost. I was a little shaky, to be honest with you. It's a little shaky. Might have been just floating in the water with God's life jacket on me. Not very, I wasn't pressing on, so to say. I wasn't pursuing, I wasn't seeking very well. Um, and we can get caught up in that. And one thing that we get caught up in and I know I was, I was an elite athlete, like you are. I was an elite athlete in a pursuit to be great, to be a professional, uh, to play as, as long as I can and, and to the best of, of my ability. And so in college, I was in that pursuit more than my pursuit um, of Christ in, in my pursuit of my faith. Um, I had an opportunity after my junior year of college to get drafted and go and play professionally. Uh, a great blessing in my life. I learned and learned tons about the game, which allows me to do what I do now. I learned a lot about myself. And this is when I really started to, to come to Christ. As, we, as a professional, you know, you're trying to make it to the big this year. And, and, and you guys may get caught up in this. I'm telling you this story for you. You get caught up. I was playing for coaches, to please coaches. I was playing to, to, to please scouts. Who's going to send me to the next level? I'm enabled. I need to get the double A. So I'm playing for the, the scouts and the general manager and the stands. They're going to make the decision how I'm going to go to the next level. So I'm playing for all these other people. It gets to be a time where you play every single day. And it almost got empty. Like, I'm just playing. I'm playing. I'm just trying to please other people. And... So I, I was looking for more. I was there, like, is this my purpose? Is this what I'm here for? So I started wondering, I'm here to play bait, but this, this is crazy. I'm out there just trying to get hits and make plays for somebody else. So I started reading, I went to the Word somehow. Somehow and thankfully I turned, I turned to the Bible. 
And you guys have been on these buses traveling late at night in minor league baseball. You play a seven o'clock game, it gets done at 10. You load the bus at 11 o'clock at night and drive through the night to get to the next ballpark. You arrive about four in the morning, you sleep until two o'clock, get up, take band practice, do it again the next day. Play, do that for three days, get on that bus, go somewhere overnight. So when I was on that bus, I got to reading. And those buses are pretty dark, right? You're in the back of that bus, it's late at night, it's pretty dark. There's an amazing um, thing, I guess, I punched that light above me to read that, to read my book, to read my Bible. And as a grown man now, I look back, that was a beam of light. That was a beam of light from above. Shining light on the word. Grasping me. And pulled me in. Helped me get a real better understanding of what this is all about. What Greg Beals is to do here. And in doing that, in learning that, coming to that, I didn't... Hold on, let me go back to the, the last verse there. I almost skipped the last verse, which is really cool. Um which fits this, Psalms 119. You know, you're the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. And I just think about that light that shined above me in that bus and, and how guiding it was for me at a critical time and how thankful I am that at that critical time, somehow I ended up with my Bible in my hand in the back of the bus reading. Um, What I learned, I did learn that there's more. I did learn I could do more. But it didn't take me away from my game. All right? It didn't take me away from that. I actually learned how to be a better player also. Because I thought about my abilities. I now took my abilities as a gift, a gift from God. I had been gifted with the ability to play baseball. For what reason? I don't know, but I've been blessed with really good hands. I have. I've been blessed. I can catch and throw. I can play ping pong. I got really good hands. I'll kick everybody's butt in a game of ping pong right now. I just, I've got really good hands. I was blessed with those. So I learned to maximize that gift that I've been given. And that the word helped me understand that this is something that I've been blessed with. And the gifts that we're given in life... We have a responsibility to maximize. We have gifts. We got to wade through the things that we think interfere us, that are in our way, and think about the things that are your gifts and dig into those and maximize those. We all have gifts in our life. And you guys have probably heard the one phrase, the one phrase I dug into was, with God is my only witness. The audience of one type thought. I played with a gift, and I played not worrying about what pe how other people thought I was playing. I really, I became a better player, because I didn't care what the scout up in the stands thought. I cared that I was doing the best I could with the gift that I was given. Holy moly, how powerful that was to me. As an athlete, as an athlete, how I'm powerful that was. It empowered me. I'm in control. It's mine. I'm pressing on to own it. I'm owning that gift, taking responsibility, and I'm going to maximize it in a way that I'm comfortable with. At the end of the day, we're going to look in that mirror. In your mirror and your prayer, that's the only thing you need to... Those are the only people that you really need to be be good with at the end of the day. Whether the coach or the scout or your professor or this, that, or the other, it's your prayer and that, that person in the mirror that you got to answer to. Make sure you're doing that. Leads me to my next thought. My priorities. Now I'm done playing baseball. And I think during this time of, of my learning that <coughs> maybe these gifts I have and these opportunities that I've been given are for a reason. 
I then learned maybe I lost my father early in life because I said he was a control freak. Maybe that allowed me to grow up to be my own man and not under that umbrella all the time. Maybe these are things that are happening for a reason. Maybe God has put me in these situations and given me these opportunities to strengthen me and provide me with the knowledge and the ability to press on and use the game of baseball and use coaching to make a difference, to influence. Um, so there's something you say, Coach Fields, what are your priorities? I'm going to say it's my faith, it's my family, and it's the game of baseball. In that order. Then you say, Coach Fields, and I see you spending a lot of time at the office. <laughs> see you spending a lot of time on the field. See you spending a lot of time on the road recruiting. I do see you with your family quite a bit. I don't see you with your Bible in your hand a lot. That's true. <clears throat> I need to do better. We all need to do better to maximize our priorities. My priorities are my faith, my family. And what I have learned to do, that if I carry Christ with me in all of my actions, then he is number one. He is at the center. I can be really, really good at my job. I can be a really, really good dad. And I have to share that time. And maybe spend more time one or the other. Maybe more time than I do with my Bible. But if I am acting with Christ at the center, I have learned that I can have my faith at the top. As long as I'm, do, as long as I'm working in all the things that I do through Christ. With that as the center. And that's the balance in our lives that we all need. All right? Like I said, I've got things. I've got family at home that are very, very important to me. I got a job that's very, very important to me. You guys have a lot of things that go on in your lives. Life gets complicated. You guys are pulled in many directions. You got to study, you got to train, you got to eat. You got, there's a lot of things. You got to rest. There's a lot of things. You start to think, where's my time? When can I do this? What can I do? And it's awesome that you're carving out time to be here on a weekly basis, to do these things. And all I said, and all I want to do in this, what I've learned is if you act. And if Christ is at your center, your priorities will be fine. You can spend the time that you need to in your studies. You can spend the time that you need to to be the best athlete you can be. With Christ at your center, it still it can be your number one. And I learned that. It was tough. It was a balancing act as a young professional with that. Um, but I just learned that if I can act through Christ and keep him at center, then I'm, then I'm doing that. I'm holding to my priorities. Like I said, I hope my goal was to give you a message. I spoke more about myself than I like to, but I like to think that I was speaking about my relationship with Christ and, 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 and my faith and not necessarily about me, but the lessons that I've learned and the lessons that I'm learning. Hopefully it, it can shed some light to you and help guide you. And in conclusion, we got to press on. We have to press on. Be ambassadors to the things that are important to you and dear to you. Don't hide it. Go ahead and wear it on your sleeve. Maximize your gifts. We've been given gifts. Maximize them. And keep Christ at your center. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for who you are. It was a great opportunity for me to be here tonight. Thank you.